Ma'am. Good morning. We are continuing our study of the present word curriculum. This quarter's theme is God's law is love. During the month of September, we are discussing love completes, law falls short. There were 613 laws in the Old Testament, and a lot of those laws dealt with the Sabbath. There were specific instructions given as to what could and could not be done on that day. God gave the Sabbath to the people as a gift. Pro prohibition of work in many forms were designed to promote feasting, joy, freedom, a good family life, and well-being for all people and animals, such as not being allowed to light a fire on the Sabbath, allowed women and servants a day of rest from cooking. Even though the motiv motivation for the Sabbath was good, the Jewish rabbis had created strict regulations for it. They wanted the instructions to be clear and paid attention to how people behaved on that day. When Jesus appeared on the scene and began his ministry, the rabbis felt they needed to watch him closely. He and his many followers sometimes were not rule followers, they appeared to overturn some of the rigid structures that were a central part of the Jewish life. Jesus deliberately violated the rules established by the rabbis and used these rabbis, I'm sorry, and used these instances as opportunities to teach about God's central priority to love God and love others, and also for other everyone to know his love. Sometimes these structures, laws, rules, regulations help make that happen, and other times they get in the way. We're going to open with prayer, and I'm going to use the prayer that was in the book this time. Loving God, help us learn from Jesus about what really matters. Help us create structures for ourselves and our families that promote the kind of well-being that you desire. Help us rest in Jesus' love. Amen. Amen. Okay. But Betsy's got the scripture, I believe. I do. The scripture today comes from Luke 14, verses 1 through 6. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. Just then, in front of him, there was a man who had edema, and Jesus asked the experts in the law and Pharisees, is it lawful to cure people on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. So Jesus took him and healed him and sent him away. Then he said to them, if one of you has a child or an ox that has fallen into a well, will you not immediately pull it out on the Sabbath day? And they could not reply to this. Okay, thank you, Betsy. Uh, restoring human life to God's intention. Let me start off by asking this question. How many of you all remember blue laws? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blue laws were community laws that restricted what you could do on the Sabbath, which was in our case Sunday, of course. Um, most all stores were closed. You could not have uh, athletic events. You, the movies were closed on Sundays. And the idea was that on the Sabbath, you needed to rest and to be involved with family and church activities. I don't remember exactly when those started disappearing, but of course, as we know now, there, there's, there are none. In today's lesson, as we've already learned, it involves Jesus healing on the Sabbath and then questioning the Pharisees about healing on the Sabbath. In today's story, Jesus healed a man <clears throat> with dropsy. Dropsy was the old name for what is known today as congestive heart failure. Um, one of the symptoms was a collection of uh, 
fluid around the heart and in the legs and feet. Actually, there are four other cases where Jesus heals on the Sabbath. There was the man with the withered hand, the woman who was bowed over with infirmity, the man who had been infirm for 38 years, and the man who was born blind. In the healing mentioned today, Jesus healed the man on his way to have a dinner at the home of a Jewish leader. There were other Jewish men accompanying him, some no doubt watching to see if they could catch Jesus breaking some Pharisaic law. Jesus knew well the old Pharisaic laws. There were actually 39 forms of work that were forbidden on the Sabbath, inane things like baking, hammering with a hammer, or even transportation. Jesus poses this question, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Healing uh, was not specifically forbidden by these Pharisaic laws, but could be viewed by some of the Pharisees as a type of work, and they frowned on it. But healing was related to saving and enhancing life which the rabbis had stressed in their teachings. So then Jesus asked the question, if you had a child or an ox that had fallen in a well, which of you would not work on the Sabbath to save it? So the emphasis was that Jesus shifts his focus away from what is prohibited to what enhances human life and restores it to what God intended. Okay, Barbara. Reframing the Sabbath. Okay. Like Jack was talking about the blue laws, when I was a young child and teenager, there were only a few businesses and restaurants opened on Sunday. Sunday dinner was a big meal at home, and then we spent the day either relaxing at home, playing with the neighbors, or taking a long ride to the country. And on those days, if we were good, we might find a place to buy an ice cream. <laughs> Today, we can plan to have lunch or dinner at a restaurant and do our shopping for the week on Sunday, which is the day that we consider the Sabbath, unless we're one of the many people who have to work on Sunday and have another day that they call their Sabbath, a day of rest and to worship God. Some Christians have argued that Jesus abolished the Sabbath but most scholars argued he redefined and reshaped it to be what God's original intent was for it to be, a day of feasting and enjoyment that reflects the abundant love of God and for everything that God created and the freedom he gave us. God wants to bless and bring us closer to him and to establish a relationship between us and Jesus, which will give us the gift of being part of God's family. Both the Jews and Christians have found it challenging to preserve God's intent for knowing how to celebrate the Sabbath, to show our appreciation for God's intention to show share love on us and help us enjoy the privilege, privilege of being God's precious children. So we wonder why did the Ten Commandments which appear in both Exodus and Deuteronomy, have ten commandments, which are almost identical, but have a different reason for the Sabbath one. In Exodus 20, 11, it says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Then in Deuteronomy 5.15, he says, Remember that you were slaves and that the Lord your God brought you out with an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. So there was two reasons. One was for creation and one was for freedom. The God who gave us a beautiful creation and set us free, would want sick people to be freed from illness on the Sabbath. So Jesus engaged in a ministry of restoration of God's original purpose for humans and all creatures. Jesus knows he's been closely watched by the religious leaders who went with him to dinner. 
He knows healing falls into the fine lines between the rabbi's various instructions about the Sabbath. He knows humans want things clearly defined in order to take comfort in obeying rules. As an expert teacher who wants to make who wanted to make God's love known, he took advantage of the situation to teach through his actions and words. Work only word and uh, through his actions and words, which will work only when they are grounded in God's purpose. Jesus was consistent in his teaching. He made it clear that all structures, rules, and regulations are minor to the two great commandments, to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. That was his central theme throughout his ministry. And they asked a question on this section. What ways do you think the great commandment is illustrated in the healing of the man with edema? And, of course, that's obvious. He showed his love for God by healing the man. God wanted the man to be better. And also the man was a neighbor, so he healed him. So that showed love both to God and to his neighbor. Very good, Barbara. Thank you. Betsy, stepping into the world. Christians affirm the Ten Commandments, then and now. We need to remember that we're talking about 2,000 years ago when we're looking directly at the teachings of Jesus Christ. In 2023, Christian groups, churches, clergy, schools, pause to honor the Holy Trinity. We stress constant work. We devalue rest. In many churches, the Sabbath commandment is one of the most negated. In earlier times, early 20th century, many behaviors were reported to be prohibited on the Sabbath. This was a turnoff for many Christians. Today, life moves forward on every one of our seven days, with the exception of church or religious services, and perhaps seeing family or friends, the Sabbath does not appear to be different from the other six days of the week. Research has proven that humans need rest. Studies reveal the benefit of periods where the routine of life is relaxed and changed. The Sabbath is different. Jesus' followers were told how to behave. These regulations are no longer part of our lives. Who wouldn't save a child or an animal from a life-threatening situation? Free people take the opportunity given by God that has been given to us to have a balanced life of work and rest. Our emotional, physical, and social health need a Sabbath time to rest and more deeply a time to honor God. To know and live by God's love, we need to give time to experience God's life-giving presence in our lives. God loves us. Take time to love and feel him. Thank you, Betsy. Very good. So let us close with prayer today. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come today again to thank you for giving us all the freedom to worship you. We are here today to hold up your word and study it and put in perspective what the Sabbath should mean to us today. We know that you value human life every day, but let us keep in mind that on the Sabbath, we should set that apart to especially worship you and all that you have done for us. We pray for all of those people who need your care and compassion and your love and we ask that you uh, 
lift those, lift those people up and give them the peace that they need. Be with us now as we come back again this next lesson. When we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everybody okay. have a great week.